The second part tells about youth, marriage, and most important of all, the game of dice. This is the greatest turning point in the Mahabharata. As the Pandavas lose their kingdom and respect through the game of dice played by the otherwise wise Dharmaputra, it is an object lesson to gamblers against indulging in the vice. Karna joined the Kauravas. As Duryodhana appreciated his talent and made him a king. Karna is a tragic hero of the Mahabharata, though he figures on the side of the villains. Karna is known for his extreme generosity. Indeed, his name has become a byword for generosity without limits. Legend has it that Karna was born with his armor and golden earrings. As he was the son of Lord Surya, born to Kunti. Lord Indra wanted to get the earrings and armor from him. He decided to go in the form of a Brahmin to Karna and take recalls to his generosity. The divine room for prayers is decorated with flowers. Heavenly fragrance fills the air. Karna enters the prayer hall, fresh after his morning bath. He sits before Lord Surya and prays. Just then, a soldier enters the prayer hall. My Lord, an old Brahmin has come to see your majesty. Ask him to wait and I will be there. When Karna was about to leave the room, he was stopped by a deep voice from the idol of the sun god. The person who has come to meet you is Lord Indra. He has come to get your earrings and golden armor from you. Be careful. The message ended. Karna was stunned. He thanked the Lord. and left for meeting the Brahmin. Your Majesty, I have come a long way to meet you. I am old and very tired. I heard that you never say no to any supplicant. Please tell me what you want. Karna, I don't want any money or gold. I need something you have. Will you give me? Ask me whatever you want. I need your earrings and armor. Will you give them to me? Just wait. I will come just now. Karna goes inside the room. and removes his armor. He also cuts off the golden earring. Both the armor and the earrings had been part of his body. He comes out and gives them to the Brahmin. Karna, what happened? There are blood stains on your body. Devendra, 
I am happy that you have come to see this ordinary human. The Brahmin assumes the form of Indra. Karna, none can match your generosity. In spite of you knowing that I am actually Indra, that I have come in the form of a Brahmin, you have given me what I desired. Lord, if you require my life, I will not hesitate to give it to you. Karna, I am greatly moved by your generosity. I bless you to have eternal prosperity. Lord Indra disappears. As long as the armor and the earrings were with Karna, he could not be defeated by anyone. That's why Lord Indra took his earrings and armor. Karna too knew about it. But to give unquestioningly was his nature. He could not say no to anybody. The greatest and the most charming personality of the Mahabharata is Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Krishna was born to Vasudeva and Devaki. Devaki was the sister of the demon Kamsa. Krishna, an incarnation of Lord Vishnu, came to kill Kamsa and other demons and bring peace to the universe. He killed Kamsa and became the ruler of Dwaraka after the death of his grandfather, King Mugrasena. Krishna is the cousin of the Pandavas. Since there was enmity between Pandavas and the Kauravas, he wanted to bring peace between them. He meets King Dhritarashtra. Who has come? The King of Dwaraka, Sri Krishna has come to see you, my Lord. Welcome Krishna, I am happy to have you here. Uncle, I thought it's a long time since I met all of you. Yes, tell me Krishna, how's everyone at Dwarka? Everyone is fine, but the small problems cropping up between the Pandavas and the Kauravas is not a good sign of a flourishing empire. That brothers everyone there? Uncle, you are a great person and only you can solve this. The Pandavas too need a kingdom for themselves. I agree with you Krishna, but Duryodhana is very adamant. What can I do? Tell me. You need to give the best part of your kingdom. Please give them some land such that they will be out of your sight. Alright Krishna. Let them live and govern separately. I don't differentiate between the Pandavas and the Kauravas. Both are equal to me. I will give a small portion of the land to Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira was called by Dhritarashtra. Greetings, uncle. Your Majesty, Yudhishthira has come. Is that Yudhishthira? Welcome, my dear son. Krishna has come from Dwaraka to meet all of us. I am very happy to meet Krishna after a long time, uncle. Yudhishthira, I will give a part of my kingdom to you. You can have a portion of the western part of the empire, which starts from the jungle border. Yudhishthira knows well that the kingdom given will be good for nothing as it was mostly hilly and no crops could be grown there. 
the rest of the place were covered by forests. But he did not want to oppose the idea and create confusion. Thank you, uncle. I will take the kingdom what you have given. I will move with my brother soon. God bless you, my son. Yudhishthira informs his brothers about the land given to them. No chance. I am not willing to come. That area is full of dry hills and forests. Even animals will find it difficult to stay there. Why did you accept that land? Brother, instead of insulting us by giving this piece of useless land, they could have just left things be. How heartless these people are. When father was there, he took care of his brother so well. Arjuna, Bhima, what is the use of showing your anger to Yudhishthira? He has done the right thing by accepting for this proposal. If you don't accept, then you will have to stay here with your mother under the mercy of Duryodhana. His arrogance knows no bounds. Brother, I'm sorry. We will move. I will do make the preparations for the journey. Thank you, Krishna. If you had not come here, we should have been under the mercy of Duryodhana forever. Duryodhana was not happy with the new kingdom given to Pandavas. The Pandavas reached their kingdom. They worked hard to make the land fertile. Every day, Arjuna and Bhima would go out to collect food as arms. One day, Brother, I don't know how long we can pull on like this. Let us wait for good times to come. Mother Kunti is with us. We have to take care of her properly. The food we give Bhima is not sufficient. He needs more food. I can manage with a little food. Give him more. Brother, I don't see any ray of hope. Don't lose heart. We have not done any harm to anyone. We will get everything at the right moment. Days passed. One day, Arjuna and Bhima went out in search of work. They entered the kingdom of Drupada and they were surprised to see the city wearing a festive look. What is it that you are celebrating today? Our princess Draupadi is getting married today. Great kings have come from many kingdoms. Arjuna, let's go and see the Swayamvar. We have come here on other work. Why do you want to go there? Let's just see how the Swayamvar takes place. All right, come. Arjuna and Bhima reached the marriage hall. They saw Karna, the king of Magadha, the prince of Kalinga, and many others. My heartiest wishes to great kings and princes who have come here. I welcome you all. I have arranged for a small competition. Can you all see the pool of water in the center of the hall? About that there is a spindle which revolves continuously with a fish placed on it. 
you have to see the reflection of the fish in the water and hit the target. He who hits the target will marry my daughter Draupadi. King of Magadha? The king of Magadha tried to shoot the fish, but he failed. Prince of Patankot? The prince tried, but he failed. King Karna? Karna got up from his seat. But just then, he heard the voice of Draupadi, who spoke from the queen's chambers. I can accept only a Kshatriya as my husband. King Karna might be a king, but is a son of a charioteer. Hearing this, Karna felt highly humiliated. His face turned red as he was put to shame in front of all the kings. He bowed his head and returned. Arjuna, why don't you try? Are you jesting? Keep quiet. We may not have a kingdom, but we are Kshatriyas by birth. So what? None of them knows us here. You clear the competition. Getting married or not doesn't matter. No, I don't want. Prince of Kalinga? Prince of Chalukya? He called all the kings and princes. But no one was able to win the competition. The king was worried. Suddenly, from the crowd, He can do it! The crowd was surprised to see Arjuna and Bhima in the form of Brahmins. Who are they? The, the guy, guy with, with the bow and arrows, arrows looks, looks very, very handsome. handsome. They, they don't, don't look, look like Brahmins at all. all. Who are you? We come from the nearby kingdom. We came here as spectators. But my brother Arjuna can hit the target. There is none to equal him. How can a Brahmin be efficient in this? Give us a chance and we will prove our worth. All right, try. Let me see what you can do. Even great kings have backed out. Arjuna, go faster. I have committed myself. Arjuna goes to the days, sees the reflection of the fish in water and hits the fish without raising his head. Hooray! Excellent! Amazing shot! I could not believe my eyes. Draupadi, who was watching all this from the queen's chamber behind the veil, was bowled over by the courage and charm of Arjuna. Arjuna, I have not seen a skilled and handsome person like you. I am really happy to have you as my son-in-law. But my daughter is the princess of this kingdom, so I will give you a part of this kingdom, so that you can take care of her and the kingdom. Dear King, I am not a Brahmin as you think. We are Kshatriyas and the sons of King Pandu and Kunti Devi. Bhima is my elder brother. Oh, you are the great Pandavas. We have moved out of the kingdom and are staying in a place adjacent to the forest. Honestly, I am not interested in taking any of your kingdom or property. If your daughter is interested, send her with us, else we will move now. 
We didn't come here with the intention of marriage. We saw the competition and it's only because of my compulsion Arjuna took part in the competition to show that we have the skill to do it right. Thank you great king for showing confidence on us. I'm very sorry. I did not know your identity. My daughter should be lucky to get married to the great hero. Drupada arranged for the marriage and gave Draupadi in marriage to Arjuna. Everyone was greatly happy. Bhima and Arjuna took Draupadi to their place. Bhima, who was greatly excited, called on his mother. Mother, come faster. Look what have we brought for you. Please share it equally among yourselves. Arjuna and Bhima were terribly shocked to hear this. Kunti came out and saw the beautiful Draupadi. Who is this beautiful damsel? She is the princess of the Drupada kingdom and is now the wife of Arjuna as he won the competition in the Swayamva. Kunti was happy to see her, but at the same time worried by the mistake done by her. Unable to go against the words of Kunti, Draupadi became the wife of the Pandavas. Days passed. The brothers worked hard to make their land fertile. People started to settle down. Duryodhana was not able to bear the success of the Pandavas. A few days later, the Pandavas built an exclusive palace decorated with gold and silver. That palace was built with the assistance of Maya, a demon who was saved by Arjuna. Maya built the beautiful palace and the beautiful hall of Indraprastha. Everyone was invited to view the palace. Duryodhana's maternal uncle was Shakuni. He was very cunning and an expert in the game of dice. Uncle, did you hear about the hall of Indraprastha? Duryodhana, why are you bothered about it? You can have thousands of such halls. Uncle, the hall is no big deal, but everyone speaks highly of the palace and the hall. You go personally and check it out. Why should I go to the beggars? Do I seem so cheap? Duryodhana, I know about you. If you don't see the palace in person, you cannot be at peace with yourself. Take a look and come back. I know well that this palace is not built by Yudhishthira or his brothers. Then, it must have been made by some magical power, I am sure. Excellent, uncle. You are the ruler of this great empire. Why get confused about such small things? What shall I do now? Go and visit the palace and come back. If you go there, you can find out about their position. We will teach a proper lesson to all these people in one shot. I know each one's weakness. Don't bother. Thank you, uncle. I know you can do it. Duryodhana leaves for Indraprastha. The palace was an epitome of beauty and richness. The pink palace decorated with flowers of gold and silver was a feast to everyone's eyes. Duryodhana was dumbstruck. Duryodhana enters the palace. Welcome Duryodhana. It's a great surprise. How's uncle? 
all are fine. The architecture of the palace is good. Send the architects to our palace too. Sure, you should stay here at least for a couple of days with us. The king of Magadha is meeting me tomorrow. I should be there. Uncle Shakuni wanted me to meet you and convey his wishes. That's why I came. All right, permit me to leave now. You have not seen the palace completely. Please take a look. When Duryodhana entered the hall, he saw a pool of clear water. The reflections were amazing when lights fell on the water. Duryodhana was very careful and he lifted his silk garments and took his steps cautiously. Just then, he could hear the sound of giggling and laughter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's not water. It's the polished floor. Haven't you seen it before? Tread carefully. Duryodhana's face turned red. He was unable to stand the humiliation. He ignored both of them and entered another hall. The beauty of the hall astonished him. There were no pillars and it was a plain floor. It looked like a pool of water. It was a pool of water, but this time Duryodhana walked on it. He slipped and fell into the water. Oh no, this is water, not a floor. <laughs> <laughs> Draupadi, Kauravas are used to making many mistakes in the same way. Ha! A blind son of a blind father. Ha 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 ha! Correct! You are very correct! Duryodhana was put to shame. He was not able to stomach the insult. He stormed out of the palace in shame and indignation. Yudhishthira comes running to him. Duryodhana, what happened? Where are you going? Yudhishthira, I will teach a lesson very soon to all of you. Yudhishthira was puzzled. Uncle, where are you? Come Duryodhana, why are you in haste? What is the matter? I have been humiliated to the extreme. I cannot face anyone. That shameless Draupadi and that demon Bhima have embarrassed me to the maximum. I don't want to see even you. Duryodhana, be calm. Tell me what happened. Duryodhana explained to Shakuni the details of his Indra Prastha visit. Shakuni's face took on a demonish expression. Duryodhana, you are a true Kshatriya born to King Dhritarashtra of this great dynasty. You are not like the Pandavas who has five different fathers and none of them belong to this dynasty. For what Draupadi has done, the Pandava brothers have to pay a price. She has to pay the highest price for her mistake. Uncle, do something, else I will kill myself. Stop it. Get up. I will tell you the way. Bravery alone is not sufficient. You should be equally smart to quell your enemies. What are you going to do? Pandavas, each of them has a weakness. Arjuna cannot stand anyone opposing him in archery. That is his weakness. Bhima has a weakness for good food. But these two things cannot be used for putting them down. What about Yudhishthira? Yudhishthira has a weakness for the game of dice. 
He cannot control himself and is a bad player. If you bring him here, we can play the game. Assume all his wealth and send the Pandavas to the forest. <laughs> Wonderful idea. But uncle, what will happen if we lose? With me calling the shots that never can be, we will win. You see, my dice will never disobey my words. How is that? Shakuni took the dice. Duryodhana, tell me now, which number you want? One. Shakuni rolled the dice and it showed one. Fantastic. Amazing, uncle. Shakuni took the dice and was ready for the second turn. Duryodhana, tell me now, which number you want? The same one again. And one it was. Hooray, uncle. You are really great. We are going to win and drive away the Pandavas to the forest forever. <laughs> I cannot wait to see it happen. Duryodhana, call the Pandavas right away. We will teach Draupadi, Bhima and Arjuna what humiliation really means. Duryodhana told his father to invite Yudhishthira for the game of dice. He readily accepted and sent an invitation to Yudhishthira. Brother, this invitation looks strange. I feel something fishy in this. They have planned for something else. Why should we go? The invitation is from Uncle Dhridharashtra. We cannot say no. Let's go and play. It's only a game. As long as it is a game, we will be safe. The Pandavas reached the palace of Hastinapur. Duryodhana was immensely happy to see all the five brothers. Bhima did not like the sight of Duryodhana. The assembly hall of Hastinapur was full. Dhritarashtra was seated on his throne. Bhishma, Drona, Sage Vyasa, other sages and ministers were present. Welcome, Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira entered the hall. Greetings to you, uncle. Is that Yudhishthira? Welcome, my dear son. Greetings to my great-grandfather, Bhishma Pitama my great teacher Druna and other elders present in this great hall. Blessings to all of you, Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira sat on the royal carpet with his brothers on one side. They expected Duryodhana to sit on the other side. But to everyone's surprise, Shakuni came along with Duryodhana. The Pandavas were shocked to see him. Yudhishthira, Uncle Shakuni will play on my behalf. Why? You were the one who invited us to the game, not your uncle. Yudhishthira, I will play with you. He will just assist me in rolling the dice. That's it. The Pandavas were not satisfied with this answer. But having come, Yudhishthira was not able to say anything in the presence of all the elders. Uncle, let us start the game. I need number one. Shakuni smiled and rolled the dice. It showed number one. I need three. He rolled the dice. It showed five. <laughs> I need twelve now. Shakuni rolled the dice and it showed 12. <laughs> Excellent! The game continued for some time. Mm -hmm. 
Yudhishthira, now that you have your own kingdom, can't you bet on your horses and play? It will be highly interesting. All right, I bet with my horses. Yudhishthira, tell me which number you want. I need five. Uncle, I need seven. Immediately, the dice was rolled and it showed seven. Hooray, Yudhishthira! Your horses are mine now. Arjuna and Bhima were shocked. Brother, let's move. Yudhishthira remained dumbstruck. Yudhishthira, why don't you bet with your elephants now? Yudhishthira was in deep thought. Yudhishthira, nothing to worry. If you win, you can get your horses back. Simple. All right, my elephants. Tell me which number you want. I need the number five. I call seven. Shakuni rolled the dice and it was seven. Excellent! <laughs> The elders of the assembly hall were shocked to see the state of the Pandavas. Dhritarashtra was immensely happy to hear his son's joy. Brother, let's move. Let's go no further. But Yudhishthira appeared to be tied with a magical spell. Having a weakness for the game of dice, he was not able to even think of his brothers or his kingdom. Yudhishthira, can you bet on your kingdom now? Hey Duryodhana, you shut up. I am talking to Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira, I understand your problem. But you have to take back your elephants and horses, is it not? Yudhishthira nodded his head. Can you keep your kingdom? Again, Yudhishthira nodded his head. I need number eight. You throw the dice now. Yudhishthira threw the dice and it showed number five. The brothers were stunned. Luck is deserting you this time today. <laughs> so sad, Uncle. What shall we do to you this time? He has lost his kingdom and his army. Duryodhana, why do you talk like this? He has lost everything. More than his kingdom and his army, he has his great brothers. Arjuna, Bhima, Nakula and Sahadeva were speechless. Even Duryodhana did not expect this move. He was overjoyed. Drona and Bhishma felt vexed at the humiliation of the Pantavas. Yudhishthira, did you hear what uncle told? Yudhishthira nodded his head. If you want, you can bet on your brothers and play. Don't worry, we are not going to eat them up. We just want to see the end of the game. I keep Arjuna. Arjuna was dumbstruck. He felt as if thunder had fallen on him. He could not control his anger. Arjuna, it will be. Hey, tell me the number. I need number one. Oh, it's Arjuna, the greatest hero of the Pandavas. Uncle, roll number one. Shakuni rolled the dice and it went against Yudhishthira. Arjuna's face turned red. He bent his head down. 
His whole body shivered with embarrassment. Yudhishthira was like a rock. His body, mind and soul were completely involved in the game. Nothing could move him. Arjuna, the hero is now my slave. <laughs> Yudhishthira, it's a game. One cannot be winning all the time. We have been winning till now. It can be your turn from now. Bet on whatever you have and play. Let's give it a shot and see. Maybe by betting on your brothers, if you're able to win, you will be able to get back whatever you have lost till now. Yudhishthira, are you scared? I bet on Bhima now. Yes, that's the spirit. Yudhishthira is really brave. Yudhishthira, you throw the dice now. We need eight. Yudhishthira threw the dice and it showed eight. Hooray! Great mighty Bhima has become more mightier now. Another feather in his cap. <laughs> Bhima could not control his emotions. He tried to get up, but Yudhishthira stopped him. Duryodhana was on cloud nine. Bhishma, Drona and other elders were greatly embarrassed to see their atrocities. Dhritarashtra, even though he could not see, was able to hear everything and was in great delight. Yudhishthira bet on his remaining two brothers and lost them. All his brothers were silent. Duryodhana did not know what to do next. He looked at Shakuni. Shakuni started his master plan. Yudhishthira, you have lost all your brothers. What are you going to do alone? Yes, uncle. Even his brothers would like Yudhishthira to be with them always. Duryodhana, that's not fair. If Yudhishthira wins, right now he can walk away with pride to Indraprastha. Yes, of course. Arjuna tried to interfere with Yudhishthira's decision. He caught hold of Yudhishthira's hand. But Yudhishthira could not be stopped from proceeding further. I place myself. Excellent. Tell me the number. Seven. Uncle, roll the dice. Shakuni rolled the dice and it was everything but seven. Yudhishthira had lost. We have won. Great victory to us. The greatest victory to Hastinapur. Duryodhana, let's stop this. Everything is over. Nothing left. The Pandavas have lost their kingdom and from now they are my slaves. Duryodhana, why are you in a hurry? Why, uncle? Are they not my slaves? Even the very earth on which they stand does not belong to them. <laughs> Duryodhana, I'm not happy. 
Yudhishthira, you did not have even a bit of luck today. What can we do? Yudhishthira has wholeheartedly accepted this. No one has forced him. That's true. But let's give him a last chance. A chance of a lifetime. But they do not have anything more. On what basis do you want me to give them a chance? Draupadi is there. On hearing the name of Draupadi, all the brothers looked at Shakuni in despair. Drona stood petrified. Bhishma bent his head down. Duryodhana was excited. But how will Yudhishthira accept this? She is their wife. Why not? Yudhishthira is more a loving brother than a loving husband. For him, his brothers are more important than Draupadi. For the sake of getting back his brothers, he can bet with Draupadi. Duryodhana, what uncle says is correct. Since Karna was ill-treated by Draupadi at the time of Swayamvar, he too wanted to teach her a lesson. Bhima pressed Yudhishthira's hand hard, but Yudhishthira appeared intent on continuing the game. Yes, my brothers are more important for me. I bet with Draupadi. Yudhishthira closed his eyes. When he uttered those words, thunder and lightning could be heard. The entire assembly was speechless. Your last lucky number. Yudhishthira, this is your fate now. Tell carefully. Number 12. Uncle, I need 12 now. Is it possible? Give 12 to dice the fate of this great empire. He rolled. The dice rolled and rolled and finally stood on 12. Father, I have won the Pandavas. They are the dust of my feet now. They should run away from the country right away. Draupadi is my servant now. Uncle, you have made it. You have proved what stuff the Kauravas are made of. Hey, gods, bring that servant Draupadi here. The gods rushed to Draupadi. After her bath and prayers, she had let her hair loose and was drying it up. You are asked to come to the palace hall immediately. Draupadi was puzzled. Hastinapur? Why? Your husbands played the game of dice and lost themselves and the kingdom. They have even lost you. Our King Duryodhana wants you there. On hearing this, Draupadi fainted. One of the maids sprinkled water and made her to get up. Her eyes became red in anger. Go, tell your king that no one has the right to bet on me, as if a piece of property. Your husbands have kept you and lost. Have they bet on me before losing themselves? 
No, after losing themselves, they bet on you. When they themselves have become slaves, what right do they have on me? Go and tell this to your king. None can come near me. Get away from here. Your Highness, Madam Draupadi says that none of her husbands have the right to pledge her and play as they have become slaves before that. What? Fool! Did you tell her that I have called? Yes, my lord, but she wanted me to find an answer for this. You fool! Did I ask you to narrate stories to her? Dushasada, this idiot is good for nothing. You go and drag her here. Dushasana was immensely happy with his job. He charged forth to Draupadi. Draupadi was in her room looking forlorn. Dushasana stormed into her quarters. Hey you! How dare you oppose our king? Shut up, you servant. You don't have any right to talk. Get out of here! Come on! Dushasana dragged her by her hair, took her to the chariot and drove towards the assembly hall. Draupadi screamed, but her efforts were in vain. Dushasana dragged her by her hair and forced her into the hall. Draupadi looked desolate. Tears streamed down her eyes. In the hall, she found her husbands dispirited. Their heads hung down. Pitamaha, I never expected you in this unruly place. My husbands have lost themselves and have become slaves. Then what right they have on me? Pitamaha, why don't you answer? Uncle, you are like a father to me. Look at the way in which I was dragged to this hall. Will you tolerate it if your daughter is treated like this? Dhritarashtra did not answer. Stop your stupid lectures. You're not a judge. We are the kings and the judges here. Your husbands are my servants and you are also one. Hey you! Don't ever call me a servant. Mind your words. Duryodhana became wild. He patted his lap. All right, you should not be called as a decent servant. Now come and sit on my lap. Hearing this, Bhima flew into a rage. He could not control himself beyond that. Duryodhana! I will tear your thighs and drink your blood. This is my war. Your heart is devil. I will smear my hair with your blood. Until then, I will not tie my hair. This is the greatest vow of my life. Dhritarashtra was terribly upset when he heard all this and got scared. Duryodhana, what's happening here? Dushasana! Strip her off her clothes right away. Teach a lesson to all these slaves. Draupadi ran hither and thither. None was there to help her. She screamed, but of no use. Dushasana pulled her sari. Finally, Draupadi prayed to Krishna. Krishna! Krishna, my lord, please save my honor.
ही मनस्तु शासना kept pulling her sari it multiplied ceaselessly he finally became tired and fell to the ground with closed eyes draupadi was seen praying to krishna after some time she regained her senses great uncle i will never forget this great dishonor no woman on earth should suffer like me for the way your people have treated me they will be punished terribly your dynasty will perish saying so draupadi broke down draupadi get up calm yourself don't talk big words duryodhana give them some property father they are my slaves now what do you want me to give them at most i can let them free with one condition the pandavas raised their eyebrows they have to leave for the forest and stay there for 12 years the 13th year they can come back to the country but should live incognito no one must see them in case someone recognizes them again they have to go back to the forest for 12 more years duryodhana give them some land on his father's request duryodhana gave some land and sent them away everyone present in the hall was in great grief to see the pandavas humiliated they had come as kings and were now seen as slaves the pandavas reached the forest and did the toughest jobs to run the family <laughs> <laughs> 